Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. I hope you enjoy. Big Hearted Bull, written by Teller of Tall Tales. This is enough to get you through the month. Are you sure? Billy slowly stood, having tipped a credit chip into the homeless draconian's hat. A people of honor and pride. A draconian man dramatically pledged his life in service of Billy. Billy simply set her hand on this thin, sallow man's shoulder. I am honored, but please, regain your strength. Let your life not be a waste, should the time come. The draconian, with magnificent red scales, regained some color, snapped a military salute. Billy smiled and gestured for him to continue with him down the street. Rising from the coiled resting position, I slid along the ground as he walked. He and I bore an uncanny resemblance to a human mythological creature known as a naga. I didn't know if this was a good thing or a bad thing, but he assured me that it was just an observation. The main street of Rust Town was lined on either side with stalls that sold counterfeit goods, food that would put you in a hospital and homeless sentience. Billy worked at a soup kitchen nearest the town square, stating, Pays good, helps people survive, I'm happy with it. The sun beamed down on us as we made our way down the street. It was going to be a blissfully warm day. I'd been lost in my thoughts when suddenly Billy grabbed my arm, eyes fixed on something happening in an alleyway. His smile melted away. He looked angry. Then I saw why. Two massive Traxian males were kicking a curled up lump on the ground. Without a word, Billy stepped into the alleyway. He broke into a jog, then started running as I tried to catch up and stop him. The Traxians ahead wore a signature scale dye tattoo of the red sun with the black center on the backs of their necks. They were light snuffers. Billy was about to get himself killed. I'd only made it halfway down the alleyway when Billy tackled one of the eight-foot-tall Traxians to the ground. He didn't even get two punches in before the other Traxian ripped him off and threw him against the alley wall. They didn't stop there, though. The one on the ground picked up a glass bottle as he stood and smashed it against Billy's face as he tried to get up. I watched on, frozen in fear, as the two hulking reptilians proceeded to punch and kick Billy against the wall until he finally stopped struggling. Then... Realizing they had a witness, turned to face me. Chuckling darkly, they began to walk towards me. One drew a large knife, a mad glint in his eyes as I tried to slip backwards. I whipped my tail out, trying to sweep them off their feet, but the one on the right caught bit by the tip and pulled. I fell flat on my stomach before turning over and raising my arms to shield my face. Then, from behind them, a brick sailed from the alleyway, smacking into the back of the left one's head. When they turned around to look behind them, I caught a glimpse of Bull. There was a jagged cut on his cheek and over his right eye. His dark, raven-black hair was soaked in blood from yet another cut in his skull. As his right eye was swollen shut, a tooth was missing on his blood-stained gums. He was shaking, but he was also grinning. Come on now, if you're gonna beat a man to death, don't stop halfway. The curled-up bundle previously on the ground had disappeared. The Traxians took no notice of this, however, as they closed back in on Billy, who, to my utter shock, raised his arms in surrender. He wasn't even going to try and fight back. A crushing blow caught him in the jaw from the right Traxian, knocking him to the ground. As he tried to stand again, the left one kicked him in the ribs. Billy rolled onto his side, and they just kept kicking him. Then one raised a knife and brought it down on Billy's side, making him gasp in a horrible, wet way. I was helpless, useless. I tried screaming and begging to let him go, to stop, but it fell on dead ear holes. That's when a Dobian Ractile knife flew over my head and buried itself in the thigh of the left track scene, who let out a scream as the serrated blade sunk deep into the flesh. I turned. Nobody dared draw a knife against the snuffers. Then I saw who'd thrown the knife. A Dobian, muzzle twisted in anger, stood swathed in a thick brown robe. Behind him stood a draconian from earlier, Beggar's rags gone to reveal a sturdy, muscular physique as he hefted a large metal pipe. But there was more. A centillion, chitin visor dropped down over the vulnerable face. Stony skin painted the darkest black of tar. The Kalupian, their eyes boring into the back of the right one's head as they copied everything the Traxian knew into their own knowledge. And lastly, stepping from behind them, an ancient-looking Traxian male with a blacked-out sun tattooed on their cheek. I dared not move as he opened his mouth. You do not interrupt the Don. 
What is this I hear about my subordinates beating an absolute scales of the big hearted bill? The Traxian on the right tried prostrating himself to explain, but Don shut him up with a wave of his hand, stepping past the two. He knelt down by barely breathing Bill in a gesture completely unexpected from the Don. He gently cradled Billy's limp form and picked him up, walking back towards me. I slowly righted myself and followed the Don when he twitched his tail at me. I couldn't hold my tongue any longer. Anxiety gripped my chest as I blurted out, Will it be okay, sir? The Don paused halfway to his calm, and I only now realized that he's starting to cry. I do not know my serpentine child. He is still breathing, and for their sake, he better remain that way. I held Billy's hand as the machines hooked up to him beeped softly. He'd been in a coma for four days now. I admittedly hadn't left his side. I barely registered the Don walking in until he took a seat beside me. I looked over at him, the question obvious on my face. Why? He asked softly, still gazing at Billy's still form. Because I owe him a debt I may never repay. You see, two years ago, four gunmen from a rival gang shot up my wife and youngest daughter's hovercraft. My wife died in the initial barrage. But, my daughter, only five solar cycles old at the time, had been hit in the neck but didn't die immediately. Billy had seen the entire mess go down. Instead of running away, he... He ran up to the craft while it was still being shot at. He took a slug to the face and chest, but it didn't stop him. He pulled my daughter free and, while still being shot at, held the wound closed with his bare hands. It was only minutes before EMTs on my payroll reached them, but in that time my daughter wouldn't have survived without him. He very narrowly avoided death that day as well. The Don trailed off, lost in memory before continuing. I have him to thank for every smile, laughed, cry, giggle, and tantrum my little girl makes. But he never asked for any reward. I told him he could have anything he ever wanted at a word. He didn't ask for a single credit. Instead, he... Billy's raspy voice cut off the Don. I only asked that he would make sure that she had a good childhood. The one I never got. I almost toppled the bed in my haste to give Billy a hug. He groaned as I squeezed him, chuckling. Hey... Careful, Ray. Broken ribs, remember? I recoiled back, apologizing profusely, but he waved it away. Opening his eyes to reveal the mismatched pupil size, I grimaced. That is a bad concussion. The Don smiled and stood, clapping Billy on the shoulder. I've got the two who put you here waiting in the lobby. Give the word and I'll have them turned into fertilizer. Billy laughed. The laugh quickly devolved into a cough before the smile and closed his eyes, leaning back into the pillow. Always so dramatic, Geopard. I have had no such thing done to them. I simply want an apology. Both I and the Don looked at each other in shock. I gaped at Billy as he folded his hands behind his head. They, they tried to kill you, my boy. Are you sure all you want is an apology? Now you can have them scrubbing your toilets for the rest of their lives if you wanted me to. Billy smiled softly and wiped his nose. They should be apologizing to the kid that they were beating up for money. I wish I was exaggerating. They should truly answer to them. But you are correct. It is me they attempted to kill. So yes, an apology will do. John Geopart sighed softly, a smile slowly turning up the edges of his lips. Very well, though if you change your mind, we did already have them dig their own graves. My fear for the Don was suddenly renewed as he padded out of the hall. But he sighed again. I still think Geopod watches The Godfather one too many times, but uh, so long as it keeps my ass above the dirt, I don't care. I stared at Billy dumbfoundedly. How in the actual feck are you so nice? He gave a hearty laugh like my question was stupid. <laughs> because my father was a selfish douchebag, and I refused to be anything like him. Now, uh, can we please stop talking? My head feels like it's full of pottery shards. I nodded and slithered over to the door to turn the lights off. End of story. I would quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and Patreons. Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Lord Azrakal, It's Difficult to Pronounce, Dragzoon, WRE, Holly's Sister, Arcadian. Thank you very much.